right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to hear a story titled, My Nightmare Life, All Comments Welcome. And guys, this story, it's about a guy. He is 35 years old. He's been married to his wife for like 12 years. She's 33, and he has a couple kids. And not too long ago, he, she started getting into working out. I guess she's in her early 30s. Obviously, she's not as good a shape as she used to be, so she's now working out. And she decided she wanted to start an Instagram page to uh, show her fit, the progress of her fitness journey. And being a supportive husband, he decided to say, okay, go ahead and do that. Have fun. And, well, as you can probably imagine, she started getting attention from guys because she's good looking and recently gotten breast implants. And one thing led to another, and this led to her getting more... Uh, Revealing in her pictures, which led to more attention from guys. And next thing you know, she's having a full-on affair. And this is a never-ending roller coaster with this guy dealing with her and all this BS. And what he thought was the perfect marriage. And I'm doing this one, guys, to show you once again how the attention from social media, Instagram, TikTok... It is just It's a recipe for disaster because these gals will do it. And it always starts off with just my fitness page or something like that and then next thing you know the pictures get more and more revealing as they get more attention and then next next thing you know it goes w w way worse and then well you guys know how these stories go so it's always best that your gal you keep an eye on her social media if she's going to do that and it should be pretty much her fully clothed no no skimpy little fitness outfits like that and it's a, a family page maybe Facebook, Instagram, that is it with the dog and the kids, a family page that you're part of, that's it. And keep an eye on for potential secret accounts. But the mess this leads to and how attention and validation is a drug to women and they can't function without it. Also, you're going to see how pretty much when he finds out she's cheating, he really tries for the sake of the family and the kids to try to make it work. And you know how that works because when uh, once a cheater, always a cheater. And you take it back, a woman who's a cheater, she's not going to respect you. And there'll be more bullshit, which you're going to see here. You got to end it cut it loose because you, someone treats you that way and you take them back and they're not accountable for it, they're going to lose more respect for you and on, on, on. And how a guy has to stand his ground when it comes to a woman because if he doesn't, there'll be more bullshit. And there are many moments here that this guy deserves some serious smacks for the way he handles things. But at the end, thank the Lord, he then sees sees the light and how to handle things and how reality really is. Not what he, what he wants it to be, but how things really are when it comes to human nature and all that. But anyhow, it's a good, it's an interesting story and there's a lot of good lessons here for you guys who are looking for entertainment, but also things to learn so you don't make the same mistakes that these guys unfortunately do. So it starts off, it says here, my uh, current life is nothing short of a nightmare. Here's my story, my first real Reddit post. I'm 35 years old and my wife is 33. We were high school sweethearts. We married for 12 years and together for 15. We have three kids together, wonderful, healthy kids. She grew up in an extreme Christian household where SEX wasn't a topic of discussion, but more of a taboo. You save yourself for marriage, husband and your husband, and figure out the rest later. She did, and her first time was on our wedding night. So, never had it before, and it obviously seems like that was the case. Then years later, then she starts thinking about what she was missing. So for people to think that, well, I got myself a virgin, so I don't have to worry about anything because she, didn't, she isn't capable of pair bonding while newsflash, given how things are in the 2020s and the temptations of like social media, th these old values can go to hell in a handbasket real quick. It says here, we had a healthy marriage, or so I thought anyways. Always made time to talk and listen to each other. I work from away from home, so I'm, I'm gone every other week. We both have great jobs and are doing well financially. After we decided we were done having kids, we talked about breast implants, seeing my wife's body change so much for giving us her children, our, ch our children, and decided to go ahead with surgery. Yeah, how did that go with the with her relatives, that the extreme Christian household she grew up in with her getting breast implants? Uh, very nice indeed. Certainly helped my wife gain her confidence back about herself. I've always been into fitness and going to the gym, so we bought some workout equipment at home, and she began to use them. Wow, she made great progress and she wanted to share that with others, so she talked to me about wanting to make an Instagram fitness page to show her journey. And this is where the problems really begin. Why does she need to show the world her fitness journey? Why isn't that good enough for herself? 
to look in the mirror. Why isn't that good enough for her husband who's going to really appreciate her fit body, which you know he will. Or the people in society, why does it have to be for the world to see? Because that's what all the other women do nowadays. Because she is, as he said here, 33 years old. Okay, and uh, obviously I don't know how long Instagram's been around, but it's been—I I, think Instagram's been around for like 12 years, so since she was probably about 21. And she wants the attention. Bad way to go. But this guy didn't know any better. Uh, I shared my concerns with that and the negative attention that would bring, but ultimately she decided to support my wife's new hobby. Translation: You're being Mr. Nice Guy, or she just sulked and pouted and didn't get her way or something or browbeat or manipulated you into that. I get home from work one day on International Women's Day. The fact that he remembers it's International Women's Day says a lot. A few months later, to my wife crying and telling me she needs to show me something. Someone had sent her a nude picture of herself, a bikini photo, bikini photo that she had up uploaded to Instagram, saying they found it on a PORN site and just wanted to let you know when in reality, she used a uh, Nudify app to generate the image. This killed me inside seeing the pain it caused my wife. Hang on. She said she uploaded a bikini picture to Instagram. That doesn't sound like a fitness page to me. That doesn't sound like a video clip of her doing lunges or a picture of her doing bicep curls. Bikini pictures? This guy shouldn't be allowing this. I noticed it went from... Workout pictures to bikini pictures. You know why? Because she got a lot of attention probably for the workout pictures, but realized I'll get a lot more likes and comments and direct messages with a bikini picture. See how this go, guys? See how this escalates? And the next thing you know, it's an OnlyFans account. Uh, this killed me inside to see the, the pain it caused my wife. We talked about getting rid of Instagram, but this was not enough for her to do that. There you go. Over the next few months, her posts changed from helping people and documenting her journey to showing her body off with less clothing. What'd I tell you? And this guy's allowing this. Fucking smack. Come on, man. August 2021, I had my own health concerns with a left testicle pain that lasted for about two months. Many trips to the doctor and have, have an ultrasound. It clears me of cancer. What a relief. In the meantime, my wife starts becoming emotionally distant and I'm trying to figure out why. I know why. In October, I'm struggling big time with my libido and drive for life. I get tested for low testosterone and it comes back well below the normal average. Doctor tells me they need a second test before starting a hormone replacement. The second test comes back in November and the low normal count cuts off limits and they tell me they can't proceed with treatment and that I'm fine. But recommends antidepressants, which I decline. Why does it need antidepressants? I, I don't see the issue here. Is this one of these doctors that are trying to push on medication? And I'm glad he declined. If he didn't need it, he didn't need it. That week, I get another blood test from a hormone replacement clinic and book it in for a consultation in early January. Early December 2021 20, rolls around and my wife loses her uncle and her grandmother seven days apart, a major loss for the family. I come home from work early and take extra time off for work to support my wife because she isn't doing well at all. It killed me inside having to go back to work after two weeks knowing my wife is still grieving such loss. Well, looking back, now you realize that it wasn't killing you as much as you thought. January 22, 2022 comes along. I get approved for my hormone replacement therapy and take my first shot of testosterone on January 13th. Two weeks later, I'm already feeling like I haven't in a long time. We go on a trip to Mexico for two weeks and I'm having the time of my life with my kids. My wife tells me that she can't believe the changes I've made in literally three weeks and that I'm a 10 out of 10 dad and husband. Oh, thanks, honey. That's, that's great. I get your approval here even though I've been a good husband all along and it's not my fault that the, the testosterone levels have gone down, but now I'm glad you're happy. I made it uh, literally three weeks and then I'm a 10 out of 10 dad and husband. A few weeks later, I'm at work again and I'm reading articles on emotionally distant spouses and midlife crisis. I send her those links and she agrees that it does sound like her, but she's not sure why. I then come across an article that reads the top 25 signs your wife is having an affair. I'm reading this and I'm blown away that my wife has 22 out of 25 in my opinion. I decide I'm going to confront her of this, but not until I'm home. Oh, that should be interesting. On March 10th, D-Day, might as well call it Dick Day, 
We go on a date night, and I generally had a great time. I sit her down and tell her I'm going to talk for 15 minutes and want you to listen, and you'll have plenty of time to reply. I read her the top 25 signs, and she says, Wow, I can't believe you think some of those things of me. He did it when they were out on a date. At least wait till you're home. I reply telling her this is the time for you to clear your soul, and whatever has been bothering you needs to come out. I thought it was a drunken one-night stand from the summer. The tears start to pour and the long silence develops before she tells me she's been having an online SEX affair through Instagram. There you go. Now we know why she didn't want to get off. Now you know why she's uploading more naughty content. It went through September through December. Showing herself to another man. He lives overseas and while he uh, pleasured himself. Oh, that's nice to hear while you're having your lasagna at the Italian restaurant. I'm in disbelief that she could do this, but I think it's something we can reconcile over pretty quickly. Smack. And this is another area where you go wrong. Good luck, dude. She's cheating on you. She's doing this for attention because she's not getting enough from you. In her view, she's not getting what she needs from you. So she's got to get it elsewhere. This is not working out. And by you allowing this, saying, well, we can reconcile. That's going to say, oh, well, he let, let this go. What else can I get away with? And watch this. I then tell her if there's anything else that she needs to come out right now. She tells me this is going to kill us and cries even harder now, followed by 10 minutes of her not talking. I'm preparing for the worst. She tells me she's having an affair, which started on Instagram, and it started a week after her grandmother's funeral, and only a few days after I took extra time off of work to be home. It was only a few times she said, and it ended in January. As I come to find out, this is normal for only half-truths to come out and only as much information as to limit the damage and follow effects of the affair. So she's having an online affair with some dude on the other side of the world while he pleasures himself to her pictures and probably way more. And she's also having an actual physical affair where she's physically cheating on her husband right around the t- she claims around the time that her grandma and uncle died when he was home being the good husband taking care of her. And where does this all come from? Instagram. She says it was only a few times and it ended in January. As I come to find out, this is normal for only half truths. I read that part. A few days of serious of seriously taking, a few days of seriously talking all day and night with no sleep. All the details start to come out that the affair was alive and very much active until the night I confronted her. Thousands of text messages and averaging four hours of phone calls a day. What the hell are they talking about or showing pictures of? They would meet in random parking lots, in the back of trucks, hotels, the affair partner's home, and the last time in my own home. The affair partner spent the night with our three kids sleeping upstairs while I'm away at work. Eleven confirmed times in two and a half months, but as high as 15 to 20 as she can't remember all the dates. And she's uh, and she told me she was headed to the gym, but in reality, meeting him in a parking lot. She has an IUD. No condoms were used. I asked her to pack up her stuff and move out. The kids had the worst week of their lives. Damn right. Send her ass to the street. Oh, my God. There you go. It all started on Instagram. He thought he was doing the nice thing, her doing her fitness account and all that. Like I said, it's one thing if it's a like family account where he puts pictures and she puts pictures of the dog and the kids on vacation and all that. Fine. He can obviously see who's liking her stuff, who's commenting, whatever. But when it have their own account, when body parts are being revealed by doing her curls and her lunges, bad way to go. And the next thing you know, she's uploading bikini pictures and he's not having an issue with this or saying not happening here. And by the way, remember growing up in the extreme religious household, some of the most wild gals I've ever known grew up in extremely strict religious households. Oh, they went buck wild. So here we are today. Both are going to individual counseling and have a first marriage counseling scheduled for next week. Smack. What are you doing marriage counseling for? It's over. She's doing this in your own house with your kids down downstairs or upstairs or wherever the hell it was while you're away taking care of the family. Okay? No, there's no reconciliation here. And by you doing this, it's going to make her think, well, look, he wants to reconcile after all this. I don't respect, I respect him even less than I did before. So I'm going to keep up with the bullshit. And you'll see just that. She basically told me that she had written me off and we were going down a path of divorce. 
in her eyes until I made a miraculous turnaround by my hormone replacement, and this drove the guilt and shame even harder what she was doing. Yeah, I can tell she's really feeling guilty. She started her personal counseling while she was in the middle of the affair. There's been no contact with the affair partner since March 18th. She's regretful, remorseful, and wants to do wants to do anything to make this work. She is back in the house. She's been tested for the STI, HIV, and pregnancy. She's reluctant to have you know what, or, you know what, or even kiss me. And uh, through open discussion, has admitted she's having a very hard time getting over the affair feelings and the withdrawal from it. Apparently, the affair partner is 33, has zero assets, can't hold a job down, and lives in an apartment with his mother. He says, "What about my needs? Obviously, not wanting to be a doormat here. I'm not wanting this. To, I'm not wanting this to work just for the kids either." Question, comments, or concerns are welcome. Dude, this is not going to work. She's back in the house, and even though I can't imagine him wanting to touch her, she doesn't want to have you-know-what with him. She doesn't want to kiss him, and she's admitting she's having withdrawal feelings because she misses her affair partner. Why the hell are you still with her? Okay, There's a point, guys, when a guy behaves in such a way that's like, dude, you actually kind of, at this point, deserve what's coming to you. It's awful what happened, and nobody should go through it, but if you keep just allowing someone to keep doing this, there's a point that you can't feel bad for them as much. And I, and it goes both ways, both for women that, get, that act that way and men. And also, she wasn't happy wearing protection. She could have given to him, right? But this journey continues on until he learns his lesson. He says here is an update. Much has transpired since my last post in mid-March. Looking back, I wish I took the advice of people on here who reached out and genuinely cared. You mean the advice of kick her ass to the curb and divorce her ass and move on? That advice? The hardest part is accepting the reality that all is lost. Unfortunately, I found it the hard way by my own doing. Reconcile was attempted between mid-March after I let her back in the house to end at the end of April. So many warning flags giving compliments to other men at the gym in front of me, withholding the SEX. The list goes on and on. She pushes me out on purpose at the end of April saying this is so hard and she needs some time to figure her shit out. She's com- she's flirting with dudes in front of him, no SEX, and now she wants him to leave. You see what his nice guy behavior taught her? I can do whatever I want to this guy and he'll keep coming back for more. Women do not respect weakness. Women respect strength. I bet you that affair partner of hers who has no job, has no assets, lives in a trailer with his mama or something like that, I bet she's more attracted to him because he actually probably puts her in her place. He probably acts like a man while her husband, trying to be the good man here, is behaving in a way that she interprets and perceives as complete and total weakness. Women do not love weak men. They and some and many despise them and will do things and behave in a way to actually punish them for being so weak. I'm sure many of you guys have observed this in your own personal lives or people that you know. Look at all the stories I do. There's a pattern here. I'm sure the 4% of women that watch me will admit this as well. Anyway, he says here, I said I agree we need a healthy time apart where we aren't seeing each other anymore. She ends up running an Airbnb in the beginning of May and was reluctant to give me the address of the place, but ultimately does. Okay, so she's gone now. Well, that's good to hear. A little confusing there. I drove by one morning and see her affair partner's truck parked a block away. Not surprising at all. As I'm driving by, I see her and the affair partner walking out of the alley towards his truck. The alley? Oh, is she giving him a head in the alley? I turn around and pull up door to door. The affair partner is inside the truck. She didn't have time to get inside, so she is hiding, ducking down between the uh, tailgate. I rolled my window down and said, real impressive. You lasted one day on your own. I pulled to the back of the truck and she runs to the front and hides by the hood. So I left and canceled her cell phone, and that was on my plan. Two days later, she shows up at the house with bags packed wanting to come home. Said she's sick of living this shady lifestyle. I said, that's a good decision, but you're not welcome to stay here. Go stay at your your stepdad's. She agrees. Good for this guy. You're going to see, guys, he has moments that you want to cheer him on, saying he's learning, and then you want to smack the hell out of him because then he goes back to his old ways. Mother's Day rolls around, and she wants to do something with the family. I disagree. She calls a few hours later and invites me to to a movie. This time I agree. We all go to the home, and the kids go to bed. I ask her to leave later that night, and she says she's tired, and and so she didn't leave and falls asleep on the couch. That was on purpose. 
I go upstairs and see her old cell phone on the table, so I decide to go through it. I find evidence and pictures and messages of the affair. The affair. I finally wake her up and confront her on it. She goes ballistic, and long story short, the police show up and she's arrested and charged with assault at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Went through her phone, saw more evidence. She probably freaked out saying, how dare you go through my phone? I guess there were a lot of dishes being thrown, and hey, he calls the cops and she's arrested. Awesome. Usually it's the other way around. Three weeks of no contact and not allowed to visit at the, the home uh, end when the charges are dropped by lying on her police report. And she wants to meet. I agree. She wants to work on things. I'm hesitant, but she's a mess, and I take I take that as finally being remorseful. Smack. No, she's just uh, tired of living in an Airbnb, and she is tired of things, so she wants to say what she has to say to get you to take her back, and she'll go back to doing the same thing. I rent my own place for five days and end up moving back home on the fifth day, May 29th. Mid-June, things are going okay, but not well. Communicating has improved drastically, but there's no intimacy at all. She won't even kiss me. I don't know how you'd want to kiss her, but you'd think that if she's dying to get back in this guy's good graces, she would be doing a hell of a lot more than kissing him with her mouth. But, uh, nope. What does that say? Her phone still has a password. I do not know about it. I don't know about We're in bed one morning, and at 6 a.m. her phone rings. She tells me it's her affair partner. She told me she blocked it, but then she unblocked it. Smack! Get rid of her! This is like... I mean, she just keeps messing with him. Like a little kid toying with, like, a parent, you know? You know those bratty kids that behave in that way? Because this guy is just... He doesn't lay down the law and stick with it. You know, he kicks her out, but then he takes her back. Then he kicks her out, takes her back. How is she going to respect him? I said I'm sick of this shit and threatened to leave. <clears throat> Why would you leave? make her leave? She agrees to block again. I have my lawyer's paperwork prepared for separation at this point. I have a fire in the backyard one night, and she's at a neighbor's for a glass of wine. She comes back a few hours later, and I dance with her outside for the first time in years, and I try to kiss her, and she pulls away. I'm like WTF. Tried to be intimate later, but it was so bad I end up sleeping downstairs afterwards. The next day she forgets her phone, and I slide the screen down, but I can't get it, but it shows an email notification from, wait for it, her affair partner. Another dagger to the back. I confront her. She lies and says she didn't message him. He must have got her email somehow. I go downstairs, pull up her email, and read the entire conversation that's been going on for days behind my back. I show her. She breaks down. I said I'm filing for divorce the next day. I leave. She calls me 15 times over the next hour. I don't answer. Texts me to come home. She's having a breakdown. I return home hours later, and she calls me. Calls. She calls her affair partner while I'm there on the phone and tells him it's over. The affair partner asks for my blessing to pursue a relationship with her. If we don't work out, I laugh and she hangs up. All of this could have ended the moment he officially found out that she was having an affair with that guy, hooking up with him all those times in the car, in alleys, in his own bed in the house with the kids down the hall with no protection. But instead, he had to do the nice guy thing. Gonna do it for the kids. And, and you know what? I respect that he doesn't want to tear apart his family because the kids are going to hurt. And Yeah, they're going to hurt. But you know what? She ruined it. Not him. She ruined it. And look how he's being treated here. Nobody should be treated this way. And if the situation was reversed, and this was a woman writing in the story about her guy behaving this way, I would be in complete agreement too. Nobody, man or woman, deserves this kind of treatment. Especially a good one. And the kids know there's freaking turmoil. With her going back and forth, back and forth, you know the kids are just are, are hurting over this. It's better just to end it. That's it. She's out. We're getting divorced. Pull the Band-Aid off. And everybody deals with it. All this uncertainty and turmoil and drama. <clears throat> Mid-June, July comes around. She made some changes. Yeah, sure. Uh, was very positive, reassuring me that she's in this for the long haul and that it could take years to get the place we think we can. I quit my job on the road and take a new position to be home every night with my family. I start my new job on July 25th. She pushes me out again and we go for a walk and she says it isn't working and doesn't think we can get there, but never says but uh, never says one time she wants to separate a divorce. We had a friend's wedding to attend to that weekend, but I got my new work schedule and couldn't make it. She reaches out to her fair, affair partner again and spent the next three days with him after the wedding. I filed my paperwork. See? More bullshit. He never laid down the law. He didn't act like, in her view, a man. 
He didn't, you know, I mean, just look. Never ending. All the stunts she's pulling. She has no respect for him. And until he starts respecting himself and not tolerating her shit, she keeps doing this. There's no co- real consequences for her. She knows he will always take her back. That's the worst thing a guy can do, is to let his girl know that no matter what she does, I'm always going to be there. It's, it's crap you see in, in romantic comedies and movies and all when the guy's like, I'm there no matter what, sweetheart, through thick and thin. And yeah, if she gets sick or something like that, of course, a loving husband would be there for her. But I'm talking about like how she treats him. I'm always going to be there no matter what. Look what happens. Women hate uncertainty but they're drawn to it. And notice, bad boys always give women uncertainty, and they're drawn to them. The nice guys give women certainty, and they jerk them around and treat them like this. The, the, your, your girl needs to always know, if you relationship guys, that if she pushes you too far, she crosses the line, whatever that may be, you're out of there, and it's done. No second chances, you're moving on. And you'll be amazed at how you're treated. But this guy, he doesn't do that, and look how he's treated. This is a great lesson of what not to do. August comes along and she is served. I listed our home and it was sold in one month, including possession date. Separation agreement was signed this week. I'm in a much better place over the last few months being free from all this madness, which ultimately I created for myself, trying to do everything possible to help this woman, but she isn't the same one I married 12 years ago. Obviously and unfortunately at all my expense. I'm glad, A, I'm glad he finally, that's it, it's over, but I'm glad he admits this was my fault. But he, but he admits here, I tried. He tried, and he did it for the family. He did probably, you know, for his because of his faith, his views, and for the kids. He tried and tried and tried, didn't work. And this is an example. What happened? Why? That's just it's pointless. Everyone said she would do it again, and I didn't want to believe it. But deep down, I knew what happened. Meaning, everybody probably online on Reddit told him, "Cut her loose. She's going to do it again." The kids are adjusting well to the new home with me, shared custody, and I focus my time and attention on them at all times. She's not with her affair partner anymore, and and he is apparently heartbroken. Yeah, we'll see about that. Recently, she tells me I'm a great man, great provider and husband, father, all the qualities she's looking for. Uh, She said she knows she won't find another man, even 50% of what I have to offer. But she isn't S-word attracted to me, but hasn't ruled out getting back together someday. Oh, she hasn't ruled out getting back together someday? Uh, no, thank you. But notice that he's he's a great man, a provider, and husband, and great qualities, but she's not sexually attracted to him. You know why? Because he doesn't act, he, in her views, in her view, isn't a man. He's weak, and women cannot respect or love a weak guy. I hope he really learns from this and doesn't make the same mistakes again. He says, going forward... I can now live knowing I tried everything possible to work on work our family out. She did not, and that's something she will carry to her grave. Until next time, triple threat. So, to my knowledge, that's the end of this guy's story, and I'm assuming that this is it. He's they're they're done, they're divorced. They're done. He will not take her back. He shouldn't have anything to do with her aside from dealing with business with the kids. End of story. So, the lesson of the story is, guys, always pay attention to your girl, what she's doing. Pay attention to red flags. If she wants to have that Instagram account or social media account that she is showing off her body one form or another, no. In fact, that she has even has her own just with her taking pictures of herself and her friends, no. Okay? The only way, in my opinion, you can do it is if one that he is a part of with the family pictures and the dog and the cats and the trip to grandma's and the trip to Hawaii and Disney World and all that. That's it. There's no private accounts, let alone these fitness accounts where... She's doing her lunges and her dips and her bench pressing in her little skimpy outfits. And they get skimpier with time. And next thing you know, uh, picture me showing my workout body on the beach with my thong bikini. And you know how that goes. It's not a good idea. The attention validation just makes them freaking crazy. And also, guys, once a cheater, always a cheater. And if she does something, she cheats, something like in this story, done. I know you want to be the good man. You don't want to break up the family. But she already broke up the family. And look at all the bullshit he dealt with by not laying down the law, by saying, we're done. I mean it. I'm not changing my mind. Women do not respect weakness. Okay? They loathe it. And some women will deliberately do stuff on purpose to punish a guy for being weak. So a lot of important lessons here in the story. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, you come across a good story like to share or your personal story, by all means, email to me, strong, successful mail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it, and I will. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.